Discovery status is uh, right on the money, which means Discovery is coming right down the exact uh, uh, entry and glide slope that uh, is pre-programmed and uh, preferred. Her velocity now, 1,300 feet per second. She's at about 62,000 feet. There's still greater than the speed of sound About 32 here. miles away from touchdown on runway 17 at Edwards Air Force Base. Gorgeous looking. It's a fantastic camera picture, and, and they are moving uh, well over Mach 1 at this point in time. We'll probably get a sonic boom that'll blow little Joe out of his seat down there. <laughs> in fact, that, Joe and, and Mort, that's exactly how people are going to know, first of all, uh, that the orbiter is back because of a couple of sonic booms, right? Absolutely. It's almost as if the orbiter were applauding its uh, safe is return to Earth. Well, she will intersect the heading alignment circle. She'll be making a left overhead turn. And there's some precise flying required here, Peter, because as I said earlier, it's 249 degrees. They'll be shooting for it's the an energy management situation. He, he is a glider and he has to he has to transfer the energy in terms of altitude, you know, that she will uh, touch down about above the ground and the speed he has and dissipate it at the right place and under the right conditions and at the right rate so that he touches down at the end of their runway. Now, Edwards Peter, is big. Uh, is right. Peter, we can see it right overhead here at Edwards now. It's just beginning to make a turn. And, and although Joe says there's lots of runway out there for safety, oh, look. being a pilot, he wants to put it on the end. Feet. Blasting at one feet per second. Verge of intersecting the heading alignment circle. Oh! There he is. <laughs> That's the second sonic boom there. And of course, those are people on the ground. You can hear them uh, very clearly telling us that the, uh, that the shuttle is now in sight. It appears, of course, to be dropping like a stone well, in many cases. Through. Of course, Discovery is now on the hat. Looks to be going straight down. The circle. She's well, it's in a bank. Left it's a left-hand turn. turn. It's good. descending very steeply, turning back in towards the runway. And it is it is descending uh, very rapidly. It's it's sort of like a bathtub with wings. Discovery, Houston, recommend uh, vector transfer to the BFS. Peter, Translation, where's... please, Joe. Uh, we're, uh, must be seated five miles from the crowd, and you can hear the crowd cheering on our platform. They heard the boom and, uh, and see it very clearly, as do we. Now, Dick Richards, who was with us, uh, one of the shuttle astronauts okay, the day, said you could actually fly this thing down by computer. Is that correct? That's, it was designed to fly hands-off all the way down to the ground. But That's I don't know correct. That. I think, uh, Gene, he will fly it. Uh, the computer will fly it until he turns about on to final, and then Rick will take control. Control stick steering, we call it, and he'll fly it straight down. So at the moment, the shuttle is still on automatic pilot in essence. Midway around her uh, left overhead. Yeah, uh, yes. Um, of course, the next major thing is he uh, comes, uh, straightens out, and heads in towards the runway is that landing gear. And that's a major component that has to function. This looks like an airstrip. Of course, it really is the desert, and they've actually painted black strips on the runway, on, on the desert, to, uh, to identify it as a runway. You guys have been talking Black about how good it is for a landing Discovery base. In fact, it rained up there once, and everybody got terribly nervous that the shuttle would stick now about in the sand, become mud. But today, it is absolutely perfect in all respects. Peter, Peter the Air Force and NASA has an acronym for everything, and uh, it is said today that all the FODs have been cleared from the runway. Foreign objects and debris. <laughs> They've done a sweep of the runway. Remember my first... Uh, recovery of the first shuttle you can almost feel the presence it, there's something happening as it, it came to this point winds are calm looks real pretty there it is At three thousand feet discovery will execute her pre-flare maneuver she's now at about 6500 feet descending descending at a rate of 180 feet per second Speed 550 feet per second. One point seven million miles since she left Cape Canaveral four days ago. Here, down and locked the report from Mission Control. 
Texas. All right. Ninth-year touchdown. Commander out now rotating the nose down, standing by for nose gear and touchdown. It don't come any better. Like a baby when he let that noise come down. Now, one of the problems they had in earlier landings was applying the brakes on. And everything looks just to have been smooth as silk here. In the distance, the national anthem. Stop, Discovery. Welcome back. A great ending to the new beginning. Thanks a lot. And so Discovery sits at Edwards Air Force Base on this glorious day, and we listen to the final few bars. Discovery, this is Discovery. How do you read? And I read you loud and clear. Discover Houston 1 Delta. Roger. We'd like the secondary controller to off, please. The crew will be out in just a few minutes, Roger. and we'll be back right after this message. Discovery on the ground at Edwards Air Force Base in California. A couple of hours' drive from Los Angeles, a couple of hundred thousand people there. Let's listen now as uh, they talk to ground control at Edwards. Work has been done at Cape Canaveral, the Kennedy Space Center, and at the Johnson Space Center. They are now back. And what an enthusiastic welcome you heard them get at the very first sight. There was a burst of applause from that large crowd, and, and it was sustained applause until Mr. discovery. Control, Houston, the crew now will be engaging in uh, uh, post-landing procedures to save the orbiter and prepare her for the... Uh, gotten ready to be towed to the hangar uh, at drive. Uh, our unofficial time for main gear touchdown, mission elapsed time. Mission elapsed time, four days, one hour, zero minutes, eight seconds. Our unofficial time for nose wheel gear touchdown, one day, correction, four days, one hour, zero minutes, 18 seconds. And we show wheel stop unofficially at four days. There one you get some sense of what the pilot and the Eleven commander seconds. had to look at as they came in that enormous so piece of desert on which they landed today. The orbiter safety and they now just simply uh, sit there as we look at it from a helicopter. Of take about and we can have a look again now at, at this landing. Four days, one minute, eight seconds after it took off. The gear down in lock, the report from Mission Control. Main gear touchdown. Commander out now rotating the nose down, standing by for nose gear and touchdown. What I missed on this occasion, uh, Gene and Turner, was that little aircraft that used to fly alongside and count the feet off the touchdown. He seems to have been able to do it in a different way this time. Well, I was looking for the chase aircraft uh, when we first saw the shuttle coming through about 50,000 feet, but I didn't see them. I don't know whether they used them on this flight or not. Uh, they certainly didn't, uh, didn't make a pass after the shuttle landed. Now, give us some sense. Uh, in fact, let me ask Joe Allen, because you've come down on this particular vehicle. Joe, what goes on at the moment? They won't be out for as long as 30 minutes from now, right? Uh, that's correct. They still have quite a long checklist to go through, and it's mainly turning off equipment. They'll bring it to a point where the orbiter's quite safe uh, and is, is happy to be left for a while. Then they'll come down, and a, a backup crew, support crew, will go in and finish the job. They should be uh, coming down the steps in about 30 minutes. So what are they doing at the moment, Joe? Specifically? Uh, they're, just going, they're going through a post-landing checklist, uh, calling off switches and throwing switches. Uh, we'll hear them also talk from time to time, I would guess, with Houston. One of the impressions we had here, and I asked this to Joe and to Gene particularly, is that 
it was all gentler in all respects. And on previous missions, we've looked for some of the tiles to be missing from the heat shield. Nothing appears to be missing, at least at this distance so far, Gene. Well, this may be a uh, credibility to the effort and work that was put into this particular space vehicle during the last two and a half years. There's a lot of changes that went in, 